Hey guys, it's Miss Freed. Today is Thursday, April 23rd, and we are on Geology Lesson 10.1, Weathering and Erosion. So this is just the first part of two parts. This is a pretty long lesson. So today mostly I'll be doing um, some reading, some working with um, punctuation commas, and some word work. These are your lesson objectives for the day, if I can get to them. Um, New vocabulary, you're going to start chapter 7 today. So these are your vocabulary words for chapter 7. One is expand. It's a verb. It means to get bigger. Two, contract. The verb means to shrink slightly or get smaller. Um, remember, expand, contract. Pretty easy, right? Um, and number three is ultimately. It means like finally, like at the end, like finally, like ultimately what we decided was this. Finally what we decided was this. Four, pepper is a verb means to sprinkle or cover, like when you pepper something, literally exactly like that, when you pepper your, like, macaroni and cheese or something. Um, but not actual, like, the pepper, the noun, like, pepper, like, it's a verb, it's something you do. Number five, deposit. There's two different things, so a verb to deposit something means to put or leave something in a particular place. Um, and another uh, meaning of it is material that's laid down or left by a natural deposit. So, um, why might I say, they, they deposited, like, this in the bank like you deposited money in the bank you put something in there um but i could also say like my deposit is in the bank so that's like the noun like it is an actual thing but in this case deposit is um like material like earth material um and whatnot that's being like moved around and left in certain places by like wind and rain and whatnot number six is state and this state and we're going to talk a little bit more about this later is the condition of being a solid liquid or gas which we should we have talked about in science so like the state of matter so if it's solid liquid or gas number seven is silt um they're very small sediments deposited by water and eight is canyon which is a deep valley with steep sides and often a stream or a flowing through it grand canyon perfect example right i've showed some pictures on here of that already so you are going to read chapter seven first powerful forces of change um, you can read it independently in your digital reader, or you can, well, either way, you need to open your digital reader. Um, you can also listen to the audio recording. Um, if you want to listen to the audio recording, it's right here. You click on it. It literally says audio. After you're done with that, we're going to get right back into, so pause. Make sure you read it first. After you finish, we're going to talk about um, the word state, so word work. So, like I said before, the word state has three different meanings. It can have three different meanings. Um, it's important to pay attention to context. We've talked about that before, um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. So, meaning one of state is a noun. So, the condition of being a solid, liquid, or gas. Example, the water changes to a solid state when it freezes. So, that's meaning one, whether or not it's gas, liquid, or solid. Meaning two I know, especially for my class, you, we practice these all the time, states. One of the many smaller units of government and land that make up a country. So you live in New York State. Um, that is a state, right? So it's a part of the country, but it's in its own area. An example, in the United States, one of the most famous faults is the San Andreas Fault in California. So that's the second different meaning of state. The third meaning of state is a verb of something you do, which means to express or say something in speech or writing. So, example, the text states that Alfred Wegener, Wegener sorry, it's not like a V, created the continental drift theory. So, to state something means to say it or to write it. So, when you do your Google form today, you are going to be choosing, um, you'll see, let me let me point it out because it'll make more sense when I open it and I show you. You're going to be choosing which meaning of the word state it is. So, like, look at the first one. My family travels to the state of Tennessee to visit my grandparents. So, you are picking whether it's meaning one, the state, the noun, the condition of being a solid, liquid, or gas, meaning two, um, the state, the smaller units of government, land that make up a country, or three, state, a verb to express or say something in speech or writing. So, you're looking at each example sentence and thinking about what meaning um, not what meaning it is, if it's one, two, or three. After you finish, the, well, you don't have to do that right away. You could do that afterwards. Here, because you're also going to fill this out about vocabulary words that you just did. So the second part of this is your vocabulary quiz. Remember, it's not really a quiz. You can look back at the Google Slides. That's how I know if you're doing your work or not. Um, but the second half will be 
about vocabulary. After you finish going through that, reviewing commas, we've been doing this for, um, it's like our second week on commas now, so this should be review for you. Um, remember, we're just focusing for now. There's many times you could use a comma, but for now, in a date, an address, slash city and state, and items in a series. Series, I'm sorry. Remember, commas in a date, the comma always goes between the day and the year. So for this example, it goes after the two and before 1992. Always should go after the day in between the year. Commas in an address in city and state, the comma always goes between the city and the state. So right here, Birmingham, Alabama. The city is Birmingham. The state is Alabama. You put a comma in between. You can see it down here. If it's an abbreviation, it still does that. You don't need a comma after the street. I'm seeing a lot of people do that. You do not need a comma there. You're putting a comma after Washington in between Washington and D.C. You're separating the city from the state. You don't need to worry about other stuff for now. I mean, you can, but you don't need to. Commas in a series. So, example, tectonic plates can move apart, collide, or slide sideways past one another. Remember, each item in this series has a comma after it, except for the very last one. Usually it'll say a comma, you'll have a comma and then and something. Um, example down here, we went to a museum, a park, a theater, comma, and a restaurant on our trip. That sentence is ended by the period. You don't need another comma there, um, but the, there should be a comma before the and. I'm seeing a lot of people um, miss that last comma that comes before the and, the Oxford comma. Um, it's important that you put it in because that's how we write it. After you review that, use this, use the examples to help you do the comma practice. This is a comma practice. You're going to turn it in. Make sure you submit it. Um, I will turn it back into you if you have corrections, whatnot. Do not submit it to me blank. If you submit it to me blank more than once, I'm going to count it as a zero. Remember, if you don't do um, both the Google Doc and the Google Forms and you don't show your best effort, you will not be entered into the pizza raffle. Remember, we can tell if you're showing your best effort or not and if you've actually gone through the whole lesson. So make sure you're doing your best work. Um, those of us who are working very hard, we're very proud of you. We know it's tough. Um, we know you'd probably rather be in school than doing this online, but hopefully we'll be back 